Namaste, Yogi. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining us for another arm balance tutorial today. Here in Phuket, it is raining pretty hard, so it's a perfect day for us to stay indoors and film classes for you all day. <laughs> Should be fun. And today's class is going to be great because we are getting into a one-armed arm balance, one-armed peacock particularly, and another variation of it. So this is when arm balancing starts to get even more fun when you take away one arm. So if you are new to arm balancing, then this is probably not the place that you're gonna wanna start. If you could click below in the description, first check out a wrist warm up video, make sure your wrists are warmed up. Second, check out plank, check out chaturanga, check out crow pose, especially if you're new to arm balancing. I know it's kind of a, maybe even annoying to have to back up and do all these other videos before you do this one, but you also wanna make sure that you're coming into it safely and that your wrists are warmed up, especially before you come into a one-armed arm balance. It's a very advanced pose. So uh, make sure that your body is uh, warmed up and ready. It's very important to have a strong foundation, which is why we recommend crow pose and peacock first before you go into any one-handed variations because the principles are still the same but you need to be very confident with the foundational pose before you take it one-handed or do any other advanced shapes building on top of that foundation. First variation we'll be showing today is called croc. Let's just jump into it and have you show them what croc pose is. In that version, you have one leg bent, one leg straight, using only one arm. And it's lots of back strength to lift the upper body up and hold it there. Very nice. Thanks. So we'll begin as we do with all arm balances, explaining the foundation of the wrist, the hand placement. So in this variation, unlike peacock, when you come into peacock, if you remember from the last video, your fingertips are pointing back 45 degrees, but for croc, your fingers are pointing directly to the right side of your mat, or left side if you're doing your left side croc. So your fingers are pointing straight out. Again, your fingertips are your breaks. So once you come into this pose, it can be a little bit scary because a lot of your weight if you come too far to the right, all you have is your finger breaks here. And then if you fall off to the right, it's really important that you focus on lifting the wrist up so you don't completely collapse down onto the wrist. So This is a very advanced folding technique, so you will actually probably not be able to fall like this. This is why it's very important to maybe practice next to a wall on the side that you use the arm on the ground so that you're actually not falling over to the right because this is requires a lot of control in your body to know how to then do a little bit of a lift and pull that arm out so it can be a lot on the wrists and also quite dangerous for the wrists. So if you're very new to this, doing one arm balances, especially one arm peacock, since your full body weight is resting on, uh, kind of resting on one hand, make sure you're practicing next to a wall so that in case you fall to the side, you're not overextending your wrist and perhaps injure your wrist, but then you're falling into the wall. Or have a spotter next to you if you're very new to this. If you already know what you're doing, then you already know what you're doing, so then you should be safe and you should be good to go. So the hands are down. The fingers are basically spread as wide as you would if you're high-fiving someone, so they're not completely extended as much as they can, but your fingers are also not touching together happy medium. So what's important about watching that chaturanga video is that's basically what you're doing with your right arm. So if you were to um, bring the elbow out to the right and try to come onto the elbow, you can already see there's no way I can get my hip onto my elbow. So when you're here, you place the hand down and then you have to have the soft part of the elbow pointing forward. So you have that external rotation of the upper arms. Your triceps are coming back towards the back of your mat so that when you bend your arm, it comes straight back, and that's where you're gonna place the elbow on the inside of your pelvis, basically between your abdomen and the edge of your pelvis. There's that little nook there. 
That's where you're placing the elbow. So once you have your wrist there, rot externally rotate the arm, start to bend the elbow, find the placement, the inside of the pelvis. And then if you want to talk through it. Yep, so once you have that placement, you start to shift the weight forward so that you get light on the feet. Your left hand is posed on the ground. We recommend using your fingertips. So now everything is lifted. She can balance here. Now the, the hard part is to lift the left hand up off the ground. And you start by having five fingers on the ground, then four, then three, then two. And this might be a process over weeks and months to reduce the number of fingers. But eventually, you will be able to lift the hand up off the ground so that no fingers are actually on the mat. You keep the core strong, keep the back body engaged to lift everything up. You breathe, hold, and come back down. Very good. So it takes a lot of time to find that placement first, to get comfortable with the pose. And if this is uncomfortable for you on your abdomen then, or on your belly, then probably the placement is wrong. So you actually want to go between the, the bone here and your belly button, and that's where you put, put the, the elbow. So it's even more of an internal rotation than just bending the elbow back, You're actually going a lot more in. So think of peacock, where also the elbows are closer together. They're not, the elbows are not as wide as your shoulders. You actually bring them closer together and you do the same thing on one side. Now gravity is not going straight down from the center of your body where your belly is down. That means you have to shift a little bit to the right and lift your left side body a little bit more up so that the gravity is actually going down through the body, through the hand, the forearm, into uh, the arm and the hands, and then into your fingers. So the hard part is mostly, if you have a peacock practice already, not to shift forward and lift the legs up, but then to lift that hand up. You want to shift enough forward so that you can leverage the, the weight of the legs that is pulling you back. And then really start with five fingers and then four. And then you slowly reduce it until you're maybe only with your index finger on the ground. And then once you feel light enough, then you can lift that up as well. Once you have it lifted up, that's already a really huge milestone. Then you can think of extending the arm out to the side, which is very um, traditional croc pose. You have, you're extending it out to the side or then extending it forward up and over your head, which is again a harder variation, which I will show now. And we call this the one-handed peacock pose because the legs now go together. The legs are straight. So compared to the croc pose she just did, the opposite leg perpendicular or, on the, or di diagonal from the arm is bent. So if you use the right arm, then your right leg is straight, your left leg is bent. You point the toes and you come into it. Now for one-handed peacock, your legs are straight and together. So it's a lot more weight pulling you back. And then you want to bring that arm also forward, which again makes it even harder for your shoulders and just to keep everything in balance. It's very important for those two variations to really have a strong back body to lift up so you're not just hanging out there and you're rounding forward. It's a lot in the lift. And then while you lift, you still want to keep the core engaged. Everything is really engaged. Breathe nice and slow so you can fully focus on the balance. And the balancing part of it, what's currently going on with your right fingers, you get that feedback where you are in space with your balance and your left hand to get light there. So there's a lot going on, lots of things you have to focus on, but this is why we do it and it's such a fun pose. It requires so much presence and focus while you're in this shape. We've given you a lot of things to focus on of what to engage and little tips of foundation of the hands, the wrist, the back, all of that. But really the number one tip we can give you with this one arm peacock is to subscribe to our channel. Hit that little triangle in the corner Subscribe. If you already found some of these tips to be useful for you, then please help us out. Subscribe to our channel. Come back for more. Now, now that you have the number one tip, and now you'll just be able to lock it in and fly. It's Got great. the secret. <laughs> the secret. Now we'll come into one arm peacock. You can start in croc, just, just like Bree showed it and how we broke it down. Great way to come into it is from plank pose. You post one hand down, 
so that you can you only have to lower down and you're already in the right position with your elbow. So as he lowers down onto the elbow, starts to shift the weight over to the right to counterbalance. So now it's crock, that leg is bent, and then he comes into one-legged peacock. Legs are straight, arm is extended up over the head. That's great. Very nicely done. Important to again slowly come out of it because lots of pressure on your abdomen, your diaphragm, so really take a slow breath in. It's not good for you if you just rush it and come out of it and take a deep breath in. Really take your time. Lots on the right hand in this case, one hand, my whole body weight is on one hand and for B of course two for everyone. So really make sure that the wrists are safe, they're healthy, they're warmed up. Always practice both sides. You will, as with every pose, have one side that just feels better and that's perhaps easier or more accessible. Still keep practicing both sides so that you're not creating any imbalances or asymmetries in the body. We mentioned this over and over and over, but we really need to emphasize the fact that arm balances take weeks, months, years to get down. So if you're not getting it after watching this video, that's actually expected. This is an incredibly challenging pose and super advanced, so you really have to do the drills on your own. Take what you learned from this video, write down a few tips, practice it with us over and over and over, and eventually you'll lock it in, you'll get it, and you'll see that it's possible, but at the beginning it might feel like you're never gonna get there, and you will. You just have to put in the work and do the drills. If you're starting to feel wrist pain as you're practicing these, then please go back and revisit the wrist health video. We really cannot emphasize enough that the health of the wrist is so important and it's really good to not overdo it, especially in a pose like this where you're putting all of your weight on a single wrist. That's a lot. So take breaks if you need, revisit that video, and then even as you're practicing and doing your drills for this, you can take a wrist release in between, roll out the wrists, do some exercises to make sure that the wrists feel good and you're not overdoing it. Perhaps we made this look easy in this video, but also know that this was months of practicing it every single day, just five times each side, maybe 10, whatever you can do, whatever you're able to do strength-wise as well, in addition to your practice. So this is all stuff you need to do in addition to your regular yoga practice or body weight strength training practice, whatever you're doing. This is not any replacement, this is all in addition, so you need to put in that extra time. It took us also months to unlock these, these poses. We really call it unlock because you start and you practice and it seems so impossible and you don't know how it's, how it's possible, how other people do it, but of course, as you see, it is all possible, it's all doable. But you have to put in the work day after day after day and then over time it gets more accessible, more accessible until you someday unlock the pose and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, now I understand how to do it and how it should feel in my body and I understand all the little details. And then usually from, day, from that day onwards, if you don't stop completely using your body, you will remain, you will, you will keep that skill of that pose and uh, coming into that shape with your body. So keep up the practice, be really patient with it. As we know, yoga is a practice of patience and everything will come and show up and come together when the time is right after putting in the work. Thank you for practicing with us today. Really amazing job if you followed along or if you now, after this video ends, do this in your own time. We're really proud of you. Keep up the good work. Thank you for practicing with us and for letting us share our practice with you. We'll see you in the next one. Namaste. Namaste.